Hello everybody and welcome to my kitchen. Well, I thought I'd do my what's in my bag video today uh, because there's a bit more room than there is in my little office. You may hear a screaming baby at some point to add to what I assume is quite a lot of echo in this room. Or maybe a screaming Emily as well because I'm not sure she'll approve of me having my muddy camera bag on the kitchen counter, but uh, they're out for the time being, so let's crack on. Suppose also if there is screaming later, at least in here, I'm close to the beer. Anyway, this is my camera bag. It's a Shimoda Action X50, and I've had it about six months, really like it. It's already got some battle scars that you might be able to see on the front, and I like that as well. I like stuff that looks used. Uh, so far, so good with this bag. Really impressed with it. It's expandable, which I really love. It's got a roll top, uh, so if you've got lots of coats and things that you need to stuff into the bag when you don't want them, it works great for that. Basically, there's lots of room for things that aren't camera gear, and I always like that in camera bags. Uh, there are adjustable straps, which are important because it's a heavy bag when it's full of stuff. Tips the scales at, can't remember. I'll put it down here. So yeah, it can be a very heavy bag, but it's comfortable. So that's, that's a positive. Now, first thing to show you is where I keep my tripod, mostly for video. As you know, I hate using tripods for photography. And I use the Peak Design Travel Tripod in its case because it came with a case, weighs hardly anything, and it protects it. And uh, it works quite well sticking a tripod on the side of the back here because there's a strap to secure the case here. And then there's like a water bottle tripod holder at the bottom. So that works brilliantly. So to get at the tripod, I just undo this, undo the zip on the case and pull it out like so, works mostly every time. Now, as far as this tripod goes, I really like it for the most part. I mean, if you're coming from something more substantial than this, you'll probably notice that it can't achieve the same things that a bigger, more sturdy tripod can achieve. But for its size and weight, it's plenty capable. Uh, the head is a very clever design. You can just operate it with one hand very simply. One thing I don't particularly like about this tripod, I will say, is that there's no middle setting for the legs. So you basically go from here, no, nope, start that again. You go from here all the way to here, which means that if the legs aren't extended at all, and you want them, bear with me a sec, and you want them in their widest possible setting, then you have to have the centre column all the way up. And you can take the centre column out, but uh, that's a bit of a faff. So that's one thing I don't particularly like about the tripod, but small, it's light, so I can't have too many complaints. Okay, next up. <laughs> What's inside the bag? So the main camera storage bit opens from the back, which a lot of camera bags do, and there's a laptop holder just in the door there. And uh, this is a MacBook Pro 14 inch M1 Pro, I think, the new one, basically. And I really like it. It's incredible what this is capable of. And it's so much more powerful than my 2019 iMac which uh, in itself is, is very impressive. So yeah, this comes with me everywhere, not necessarily day trips, but uh, if I'm going anywhere for multiple day trips, this is coming. Uh, and then in terms of cameras, the setup is as follows. Obviously we're in my kitchen, I don't have a top down shot, so I'll just be rolling top down shots. So from the top down, we've got the 70 to 200 F2.8 Mark II, love this lens. Uh, it was silly expensive, but so far so good. Really enjoying using that. And there's a tiny little slot for sound stuff, so I've got this really small little Sony microphone, which I don't think is that great really, but uh, it's small, so that's good. Uh, and typically in that little slot as well, I'll also keep my Rode Mic Go video, I don't know what it's called, wireless something or other, which works quite well as a lav. Uh, then in the main compartment, as I'm sure you can see, is my Sony a7R with a strap and a 2470 on it. And a battery grip, actually, mostly because it's winter. I very recently got back into the idea of shooting with a battery grip, particularly when you're wearing gloves, uh, because it's just so much easier to work with a camera. I have had gloves before, uh, Valorette gloves, which were fantastic, where you can remove the fingers. I've lost those, I might get some more, but I have found when it's wet, even though they're waterproof, because there's basically a slit in the index finger and the thumbs, then your fingers can just get wet in those little slots, particularly if you're in snow, for example. So um, I don't know what I'll do about gloves going forward. For the time being, I've just got standard gloves. Uh, but yeah, basically, because I like to shoot handheld a lot, I've found that using the battery grip is worth it because I can shoot at slower shutter speeds using a battery grip, particularly, obviously, in portrait mode, uh, which I do a lot. So um, yeah, enjoying the battery grip. It does cost you a little bit in weight, but uh, at the moment, at least, that's a price I'm willing to pay. Also, obviously, using the battery grip, 
you get two batteries in your body so you don't have to charge as much. And I can just use the USB-C charging on the A7R. So every time I get in from a day out shooting, I just plug in the camera. I don't have to worry about taking the batteries out and sticking them in a charger. I use the term worry loosely. It's hardly a worry doing that, but um, yeah. Also, the camera strap is a Peak Design slide. A fantastic camera strap and plenty capable of holding a camera this substantial. Uh, now down here you can see the Sony 16-35 to which is typically a video lens for me. Uh, I mean I do use it sometimes for stills but usually I'm only using this for stills uh, when I want a 16mm shot. Anything else I've basically got covered with other lenses. Either the 24-70 uh, to which obviously goes from 24-35 to or the 20mm f1.8 which I've also got for Astro and for vlogging. So yeah, this only really gets used for photography when I'm shooting at 16 mil. Otherwise, it's set on the A7C, which is recording this video and just goes in this part of the bag down here. Also, I should say on the A7C is the other half of this Rode wireless thing that's recording the sound. Also below the 20 mil uh, F1.8 is my teleconverter, my two times teleconverter, which works with the 70 to 200. So those two slot in very neatly like that. And to finish off this little section, I've got my filters, my case magnetic filters, 95 mil, and a blower, which is essential with the A7R4 because uh, it just attracts dust somehow. Don't know how, but there's always dust on the sensor. And that concludes the uh, the main section of the bag. Is it the main section? I don't know, maybe the, maybe the top's the main section. One of the main sections of the bag. Right, so in the front, what have we got? Not a whole lot, really. Uh, I've got some lens cloths and some batteries for GoPro uh, and the smaller cameras that I sometimes use. Mostly GoPro. Also, somewhere down here, I've got a tiny little tripod, this little thing, which I use for a lot of videos, actually. So sometimes, because I make videos, I've got to decide whether I take two tripods with me. One that I can use for photography and the other that I can use for video, which I end up using most of the time. Now, if I think I won't need a tripod for photography, then I'll just bring this as a backup, because if it turns out I do need a tripod for photography, then I can use this as a tripod for my video stuff, if I'm filming and taking photos on a tripod at the same time. Uh, that said, there are times when it's worth just having two full-size tripods, and if that's the case, then uh, I take my three-legged thing, Brian or something, I think it's called. Punk. Punk or Brian, one of the two. Also, this bag, how it currently is at the moment, is essentially how I would take it to an airport as my carry-on. I do what all photographers do and uh, pretend that it doesn't weigh more than seven kilos. So I just smile at the people at the gate and uh, act as though my shoulders aren't hurting. That said, actually, I probably would take the tripod off to go through the airport. I can just probably go in a suitcase. Uh, other than that, everything I'd hope will be coming with me on the carry-on. Now, in this top expandable bit, which you can open with a zip down here if you haven't got much stuff, but currently I do have a fair bit of stuff, I've got a water bottle, a foldable water bottle at that. So it takes up no room when it's empty, weighs hardly anything, but when it's full, it obviously holds water. So uh, I really like that. Obviously reusable, good bit of kit. Uh, also, again, I wouldn't have this on just a day out taking photos, but when I'm going through an airport, I would have this. So this is essentially my charging stuff. So I'll have a couple of adapters depending on where in the world I'm heading to, and then an extension pack with lots of plugs and uh, lots of USB ports too. Uh, also, I'm a huge fan of these things. So every camera that I buy or type of camera that I buy, I also buy third party uh, battery chargers that can charge multiple batteries at once. So for the Sony batteries, I still need a multiple one just so I can charge batteries for the A7C, uh, even though I just plug the, um, a cable straight into the A7R4 with the battery grip on. Uh, I still need one of those. So I've got one for GoPro batteries, another for GoPro batteries, one for a little Sony that I sometimes use, and then lots of cables. Many more cables, in fact, than I'd actually need. Uh, in fact, all of this stuff, even though it doesn't look particularly organized at the moment, is all built for redundancy. And this is case in point, actually. So my laptop has uh, an SD card reader, but I take an extra one in case that breaks. So anything that's fundamental to a trip uh, and that would ruin the trip if it broke, I make sure to take another one. Now obviously you can't do that for things like telephoto lenses, but where it is possible, I try to mitigate the risk. Uh, what else is in here? Buff, very important for your neck, warmth, and a GoPro with a chest mount, which is what I typically use when you see the GoPro POV footage. Uh, this is a GoPro 9. To be honest, I've, I've not really seen much of a difference between any of the GoPros in the last five years. So. Uh, any GoPro will do. 
it's like Christmas in here. Uh, this is the little Sony that I was talking about. This is a, a what's this? ZV-1, that's the one. I don't particularly like this camera, but it's a good backup uh, if my A7C fails uh, or just to get extra shots if, if I need three cameras. If I'm going away, I do typically take this with me. Uh, mask, obviously, another mask, hand sanitizer. Uh, head torch, this is good. It's got multiple settings, a red setting, and uh, lasts for ages, and you can charge it, recharge it, sorry, via USB, which I really like. So that's a, that's a pretty good little head torch. Uh, oh, this is pretty handy. I've got this, uh, this little pencil case, essentially, with some sensor cleaner and sensor cleaning swabs, which are most important for the A7R4 when a blower won't do the job. So that's the, uh, that's the wet method of cleaning the sensor. Always bring these. Another random loose lens cloth. Uh, these are some little Rycote attachments for um, my lav mic. So you can attach the lav to clothing and stuff like that. I don't really use these all that much. I typically just use a clip, but uh, handy to have all the same. They weigh nothing. Uh, spare memory cards. So I typically shoot with uh, 512 gig cards in my A7R4 and the A7C. However, I didn't want to buy loads and loads of those. So I also have loads of 128 gig uh, backups, basically. And so on the A7R4, I typically shoot one card raw, the main card raw, which is the 512 card. And then on the 128 card, I'll shoot JPEGs. And then when I run out of those, if I'm on like a two week trip, then I'll just start shooting on the other 128 cards that I've got. Basically, if I'm away for a period of time, I'll try not to format cards while I'm away. I try and take enough cards so that I can bring those home as almost a backup. Uh, speaking of backups, I then have some SSDs. So I've got a Samsung SSD and, sorry, it's a complete mess in here. So yeah, Samsung SSD and a SanDisk SSD, and I don't suppose the brands typically matter. Uh, but basically my backups consist of uh, the cards that I don't format, uh, my laptop, which has got four terabytes of space, so I'll throw everything onto the laptop, uh, and then these two, one of which I'll keep in my suitcase for the entire trip in case this bag gets stolen or something, I've still got all of my data. Uh, holder for all of the spare batteries for the A7 cameras. Uh, AirPods, in case I get lonely, so I can listen to audiobooks, podcasts, music, that sort of thing. And more headphones, wired headphones, which actually have a different purpose, which are to monitor audio, particularly if I'm in windy places, so I can watch footage back and just see if you can actually hear anything that I'm saying. And sometimes you might hope that uh, you can't hear what I'm saying. I'll just wrap it on, complete nonsense. Uh, and that, I think, concludes pretty much everything that's in my bag. Now that changes from time to time. Uh, there's no drone in here because currently I'm testing what I can take to Antarctica in a couple of weeks time. I did not allowed to take drones to Antarctica. Well, certainly I'm not. But yeah, by and large, that is the stuff that sits in my camera bag. When a drone is in here, it's typically just for some B-roll for video. I'm not the biggest fan of drone photography. I just feel a bit disconnected from the images. But the drone that I use is the Mavic Pro 2. And I may change that at some point for something a bit smaller. Because, um, yeah, when all this stuff is in the bag and a drone and you're going up a mountain and you've got probably more water than this and some food and some layers and my gloves does get a bit much. Uh, but yeah, that essentially is what's in my bag and I hope that was useful. I'll try not to do one of these videos for a while again because I'm hoping that this won't change significantly for the, the foreseeable. I have said that before. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.